Hey, hey, well, good day, folks, and welcome to another edition of Lumberjack Logic. I'm your host, Neil Johnson. Excited to be with you. Excited to share the good news with you. And you can get yourself some Let's Go Brandon gear at lumberjacklogicshow.com. Hey, thanks so much for joining me. I tried to do a live stream earlier today that really kind of bombed. It was, uh, yeah, it, it, anyway, some of you sound like it cut out anyways and then I tried it again and I was all disoriented because my son was waiting for me and everything so anyhow um I'm gonna get this out I've got a really I actually I was feeling I'll be honest I, I was feeling a little down okay a little down not joking you at all I went to the mall the other day with my kids and I've got some stories here that really kind of lifted me up one that's really kind of I mean it's kind of negative okay hey good to see you on Collie Jason from Arizona good to see you on smash that like button chat it up with where you are from please and uh we'll uh, we'll get right into this here I, I got I'm just trying to fix something on my computer but so I've got some great I mean well here let me just kind of I got to put a little perspective on this for you but I've got a stuff you're not even going to believe on Frachi and uh, the FBI and so on. I mean, sorry, Fauci, Fauci, I'm sorry, Fauci, Fauci from Matamidi. I almost bought a house in Matamidi, shift kicker. And I loves chickens. Good to see you on. Good to see all you folks on, okay? Um, Navajo Nation, good to see you on. Uh, rich history there. So anyways, I've got uh, I've got your comments coming up here too, so I can highlight comments now here on on this stream and whatnot. So, um, yeah, I'm sorry I let that slip. It's Dr. Fauci. It's Dr. Fauci, Fred. Come on, let's not say this wrong, okay? I mean, he's with the government, our highest paid civil servant. He's a servant, getting paid almost five hundred thousand dollars a year. <laughs> <laughs> I can't help it. Anyways, Idaho, where I like to go elk hunting. Anyway, so, no, I've got this crazy story on this guy. You're not going to, I mean, I don't know. You are going to believe it, but it's hard to believe. I don't know how you want to say this. I've got an amazing story, with something with the FBI. I got something uh, funny I watched here uh, that I got to just share with you. Um, I've got a little uh, piece on some histrionics around J6. I, I, it's a it's a chock full report, but hey, mypillow.com, promo code Lumberjack will save you up to 66%. Get you buy one, get one on those Giza sheets. Oh, I'm telling you, they are the best sheets you'll ever own. I kid you not. They're phenomenal. Phenomenal. I never knew sheets could be so good. Anyways, um, so check this. <laughs> get our money back. Okay, so here's the thing. I watched, so I went to the mall the other day. This is my little intro segue here, but I went to the mall and I was so down. I was down in the dumps because here's the thing. We stopped by uh, Barnes and Noble. Okay. We stopped in at some other places and you know, I live off the grid folks off the grid. I, I love it off the grid. Okay. But when I walked into that bookstore and saw what was in the young adult section and what they're trying to sell the kids today, and you wonder why we're going backwards, I was like, holy cow, we are just, I mean, I like to do stories about winning, but I was feeling like, wow, we are seriously losing the culture war. This is going downhill fast, okay? And I don't know how many of you have spent a little time in a bookstore lately and looked in the young adult section, but what they are trying to pawn off on our children is absolutely horrendous crap. I, I kid you not. You've got to go check it out. Just, you know, and then it was just in general, um, you know, seeing different things. And I mean, I was in Duluth, Minnesota, and Duluth is a... Uh, a wokester city uh, in northern Minnesota. It's it's sad. It's sad. Okay, um, but anyhow, it, I I was just I was very down I, and just seeing some of the advertising and different things, and I'm just like, wow, our our country is is really on a bad path. Now I can find other wins in terms of freedom and everything, but this culture war. Don't ever kid yourself. It is very important. Now they use it to divide us, but if you can take society down like that through the culture, uh, you go look back and yeah, it's it's pretty bad. So anyways, I want to get into this news though. Smash the like if you would for me, please. Um, and uh, do support the sponsors. They support the show and all those links are below in the description. So here we go. I'm going to get right into Fauci. Out of Blaze Media, Fauci's NIAID spent more than I, 205,000 Kriken dollars to give monkeys transgender hormones did you guys catch that 
$205,000 to give monkeys these things. Yes. Okay. The government agency led by White House chief medical advisor, Dr. Anthony Fauci, paid scientists to give monkeys these hormones. Fauci is the director of NIAI, or National Institute of Allergy and Infectious Diseases, a sub-agency of the NIH. In December 2021, his agency approved a $205,000, well, $205,562 grant for fiscal year 2022 to Scripps Research for a study to determine why transgender women have high rates of HIV. The Washington Free Beacon first reported. The study uses, is this guy like the worst or what? This Wasting our money? That's our money. The study uses animal experiments, researchers. So here he was. Remember it was the beagles thing and now he's on monkeys. There's nothing he won't do to screw up nature. What a nut job. Whether female hormones make the immune system more vulnerable to HIV infection, according to NIH. This, this is real. Real stuff. He's doing this. <sighs> what a nitwit. Anyhow, I'm sure, I'm sure it was some buddies of his, okay? Now, listen to this. Out of the Federalist. This is nuts, Okay. Disgraced FBI number two, Andrew McCabe. Hasn't this guy just been completely discredited? But he has now called for feds to treat mainstream, quote unquote, mainstream conservatives. Is that like the rhinos? Is that what that is? But now even the rhinos are going to get the treatment apparently because disgraced FBI number two, Andrew McCabe, calls for feds to treat mainstream conservatives like terrorists. Yes, I kid you not. <sighs> Have you ever wondered what disgraced former deputy FBI directors do after they try to stage a coup and lying under oath? You guys do realize this is the same guy that lied under oath. Apparently, they give talks about protecting democracy. Yes, at top-rated institutions of higher learning. Indeed, this last Thursday at the University of Chicago, they invited former deputy FBI director Andy McCabe, you know, the liar, under oath, okay, to join a panel of partisans to discuss the January 6th insurrection. Okay, McCabe was fired as the deputy FBI director for leaking sensitive information about an investigation into the Clinton Foundation and then lying about it under oath. Oh, he's credible. He's got, let's bring him into the lefty institutions oh, so he can teach the young folks what they're, uh, they're supposed to learn or do uh, speak to our donors. He also took part in spying on the Donald Trump campaign through a secret warrant granted by the Foreign Intelligence Service at court, the FISA court, which is not supposed to be used for that. This whole thing is a sham. This guy is a sham. And now he's at these universities speaking and he, oh, he gets, still gets uh, you know the, the circuit. These people are profiting off malfeasance they are profiting off of lies. It's it's sick. The dossier he used to obtain the surveillance warrant was funded by Hillary Clinton's campaign and, in an ironic twist, was itself the product of Russian disinformation, the very things that they consistently accused Trump of. Russia, 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 Russia. All they had, all they had was Russia. We remember when the Hunter Biden laptop came out? Remember these stories because it's important. Yeah, that was Russian disinformation. Oh, gosh. Of course, neither the University of Chicago nor McCabe acknowledged the irony in him discussing the integrity of democracy. And it's not even democracy. We are a republic. Let's get that right. Chat it up with where you're from and smash that like if you would, please. Let's get this out. All right. In fact, what McCabe said at the University of Chicago event on January 6, 2022 is even more shocking than his invitation to speak in the first place. Below are four of the most appalling assertions and policy proposals McCabe made at the public event. One, conservatives are in the same category as Islamic terrorists. I kid you not, he says this. McCabe likened conservatives to members of the Islamic Caliphate. I can tell you from my perspective of spending a lot of time focused on the radicalization of internal international terrorists and Islamic extremists and extremists of all stripe is that this group, yeah, oh, that's so funny that he would say that. What about the people burning down the cities, Andy? Andy, buddy. Hey, Jackie from Montana. Good to see you on. Montana is where I got my elk last year. So anyways, McCabe went on to describe the rise of the Islamic Caliphate. This guy's an idiot. Anyways, two, 
Parents at school board meetings pose a threat to national security. Oh, yes, those parents worried about Johnny and Jill. Oh, they are a threat to national security. Oh, God. This guy was number two at the FBI, people. Number two. A guy with this kind of whack political ideology. That's what we've got in these positions when they're supposed to be absolute law. He's supposed to be blind. Okay? McCabe wants more surveillance of mainstream conservatives. That's right. I'm fairly confident, McCabe said, that the FBI and other agencies have reallocated resources and repositioned some of their counterterrorism focus to increase their focus on right-wing conservatism and extremism and domestic violent extremists. And I think that's obviously a good idea. Now, I just want you to know here, as Andy McCabe, uh, that I don't think we should investigate Antifa or uh, these other clown show organizations, BLM and stuff, that are burning down cities. No, those are good people. Good, good people, I tell ya. Oh, my gosh. But McCabe wants more. McCabe asserted that the U.S. Department of Homeland Security and FBI need to stop merely focusing on the fringes in order to catch this threat of the right. Are you going to catch this threat if you focus only on the traditional right-wing extremists? Those groups that we know about the uh, quote-unquote fringes of the right-wing movement, asked McCabe. And I think the answer to that is no. You got to go after them all, folks. Oh, I'm so glad he is out of there. McCabe believes no one is above the law. <laughs> McCabe believes no one is above the law. Hmm, isn't that interesting? From the guy who lies under oath. Please smash that like if you would. Um, keep chatting. You guys are great. Anyways, this is McCabe believes <laughs> no one is above the law, folks. No one. No one. Ironically, one of McCabe's last remarks was the proclamation of equality under the law. Whether you are a Trump supporter, a Biden supporter, right, left, or otherwise, we should be able to agree on the principle that no one is above the law, stated McCabe. From the lowliest trespasser on J6 up to the highest ranking government officials who may have been aware of a plan that would ultimately lead to the violence at the Capitol, those people should be held accountable. Period. Oh my, might it have been your Russian collusion and stirring the wheels that kind of contributed to this, Andy, buddy? Andy, Andy. <sighs> and if we can't do that, that is another sign that we are becoming a non-functioning democracy. This from the very guy who colluded with the Clinton campaign, the very person who smashed her emails, and then he says that she should, nothing should happen to her. This guy, I mean, these people are just, oh my gosh, how do they get up in the morning? How do they live with themselves? Anyways, oh my word, let's see. Here, in fact, on that note, let's talk about the histrionics and melodrama around 1-6 that are laughable, okay? So this from Glenn Greenwald. The number of key people killed by pro-Trump supporters at the January 6th Capitol riot is equal to, and this is, why is this uh, disappeared? Oh my gosh, sorry, here we go. The number of people killed by pro-Trump supporters at the G6 Capitol riot is equal to the number of pro-Trump supporters who brandished guns or knives inside the Capitol. That is the same number as the total of Americans who, after a full year of Democrat-led DOJ conducting what is heralded as the most expansive federal law enforcement investigation in U.S. history, okay, uh, have been charged with inciting insurrection, sedition, treason, or conspiracy to overthrow the government as a result of that riot one year ago. Coincidentally, it is the same number as Americans who ended up being criminally charged by the Mueller probe of conspiring with Russia over the 2016 election and the number of wounds, grave or light, which AOC, who finally emerged at night, <laughs> to assure an on-edge nation that she was okay while waiting in an office building away from the riot at the Rotunda, sustained on that solemn day. That number, folks, is zero. But just as these rather crucial facts do not prevent the dominant wing of the U.S. corporate media and Democratic Party leaders from continuing to insist that Donald Trump's 2016 election victory was illegitimate due to his collusion with the Kremlin, it does not prevent J6 from being widely described in those same circles as an insurrection, an attempted coup, and even an event as traumatizing as Pearl Harbor. 2,403 dead at Pearl Harbor. Or the 9-11 attack. 2,977 dead. And the gravest attack on American democracy since the mid-19th century Civil War. That accounted for 750,000 dead Americans. 
The Huffington Post White House reporter S.V. Dates said that it was wrong to compare the 1-6 to 9-11 because the former, the three-hour ride at the Capitol, was 1,000% worse. So they are running scared, okay? Just understand that. I mean, no way do you ever go into that kind of absolute, thanks, Nathaniel. Thank you. Um, but uh, there is no way that you ever go into that kind of um, just mass hysterical language when it's complete nonsense if you do not, um, you know, th this melodrama, the histrionics and exploitation of fear levels from the, the, the riot. And it, basically, that's what it was, okay? They sit there trying to call it an insurrection and everything. It was, you know, it was a protest turned riot. I mean, uh, there's, there's no doubt about that. I mean, things got kind of crazy there, okay? But that being said, um, yeah, there's a lot I could say on that, you know, but... But the fact is, that's that's how you can describe that event. You certainly cannot describe it as an insurrection or a coup. A coup? Do you know what you have when you have a coup? Everybody lined up and ready to take over. Yeah, I mean, the thing lasted a few hours. This is the biggest joke. It was it was nothing like the BLM riots. I mean, you can't even put it on the same scale as riots. And you know, but it's mass formation psychosis, as Malone called it. Okay, which he believes is a bigger threat than even the other threats that he's talked about. OK. So as many of you know, this is from Malone, as many of you know, I've spent time researching and speaking about mass psychosis theory. Most of what I have learned has come from Dr. Mattias Dismet, who realized that this form of mass hypnosis of the madness of crowds can account for the strange phenomenon of about 20 to 30 percent of the population in the Western world becoming entranced with the noble lies and dominant narrative concerning the safety and effectiveness of certain things. I won't talk about those certain things over here, you know, because I'm not going to. And both propagated and enforced by politicians, science bureaucrats, and uh, big, big corporations and legacy media. What one observes with mass hypnosis is that a large fraction of the population is completely unable to process new data and facts demonstrating that they have been misled about things. Okay? And then I can't read the rest of this over here on this platform because they'll say that I'm spreading hesitancy and misinformation. So I won't tell you all the statistics I have. Got a lot of them. But know this. A person convinced against their will is of the same opinion still. Okay? And you cannot take somebody who is bought into fear for forever and been completely brainwashed and give them a counter narrative and expect them to believe you. You're going to have to break it down with questions. You have got to get them engaged in the process. Ask them if their life is better off today than it was three years ago. Hmm? Ask them these questions. And then ask them questions. I was talking with uh, a good friend, people, someone who you would know in our movement. And the, uh, the thing of it is, is that... Um, he was, he was talking about how I feel like I need to have an answer to everything that, that people talk about. Because I said, don't ever answer their questions. Ask them questions in return. Double down. Double down. Okay? You double down. And, and you ask the questions back to them. So like if somebody says, oh, you have no proof. And say, what proof do you have that I have no proof? <laughs> what are you going to say to that? Or do you know about X? Do you know about Y? And take the simple facts that you can deal with. That's what you need to do. <laughs> okay. Uh, uh, Chatfish Chucky just commented on James O'Keefe. I love that man. I love him. Oh, my gosh. I love James O'Keefe. What he did with that video uh, and what he released. And it has not been yanked down yet. James O'Keefe is a stud. Okay. Let's be real. I love the work he does. 
you know, in some, in some ways I'd like to, uh, to, uh, uh, you know, it's funny cause you know, now that, that, uh, it would be harder for me to do that kind of investigative thing because your face gets, uh, um, attached to it. Actually. So, uh, Jack was saying getter doesn't censor. Uh, they have censored a couple people. Actually, uh, Nick point is, uh, was his account, I guess was shut down on getter. So they all do censor to some respect, except for gab, gab, gab doesn't censor. I've been on gab and I've seen, and it, you know, some of it is, you know, you're, uh, you're looking at, on Gab, I, I see all kinds of things that maybe, I, I guess you get a, a truer picture of, of the world and some things that you don't even want to see. I mean, I'm not into all this anti-Semitism and I'm not into the racist kind of nonsense, but, um, you know, no, Jack, you're right. You can't, uh, you can't do that. Uh, but I think what happens is people, um, people don't want to hear and that's fine. I, I don't really want to hear a bunch of, uh, you know, Jew hating comments. I can't believe that that's coming back, you know, but it is, it's, it's pretty sad that, that, uh, people are coming back in that whole thing. Um, you know, I, I don't know why the Jews throughout history have always been treated like that. Uh, it's pretty sad that people are kind of jumping back on that, uh, bandwagon. So, Anyhow, I think we have a, uh, we're going to put somebody in a timeout there. Uh, but, uh, yeah, this, this lady, I uh, was obviously, uh, just spamming the chat here. So anyways, I just wanted to get those stories out to you about, uh, you know, Fauci. I, I thought that was just un unbelievable, uh, to think that that's where our tax dollars are going. And I wonder how, maybe does he know these people? Why would you ever... Um, do something like that. But anyways, please do uh, remember the sponsors, MyPillow, MyPillow.com, okay? Um, you know, promo code Lumberjack, save you up to 66%, okay? Save you up to 66%, okay? Uh, and uh, yeah, and uh, go to Lumberjack Logic Show, LumberjackLogicShow.com, and uh, you know, I love y'all. All right. Peace out.